My name is Rico Figliolini. I'm host of Peach Week One is Life. And this is our uh, prime time, prime lunchtime with Brian Johnson, the city manager. So Brian, thank you for uh, coming down to do this. My pleasure. Uh, we're going to be talking about city issues, things going on at city council, planning commission, new technology, everything from autonomous vehicles to apps to uh, development. And uh, if you have any questions, I certainly would like you to go ahead and, like I said, you can uh, text us uh, through that number that I gave you, or you can uh, put it up on uh, Facebook on our message board. Okay? So, Brian, it's been uh, about a month since uh, we've spoken, and uh, I want to be able to, uh, there's a lot of things, and things I don't know about, I'm sure, going on, but this morning I downloaded the, the app. The city app. Okay. And that was cool. I downloaded that. I'm going through the app, and I'm like, um, I'm just like, it's 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 an amazing, um, it's an amazing app actually. I could see where I might make some suggestions, but overall, I think you guys did a great first step. Well, I was gonna say, I mean, right now it's kind of in the, you know, we we went live with it, but the purpose of it, you know, in the early stages, is always to solicit input from the community that uses it. Right. So whenever any input that you have, we would very much appreciate you letting us, you know, you letting us know how you feel about it, what we can do to improve it, because it's you know the community's app. It's just really the portal um, for people to have an easy, convenient way to get to information. And you know, I went through there and I saw restaurant listings, I saw business listings, I saw the ability to do uh, checking on uh, parking availability, although that's coming soon. I saw right. some other, the Fix It app. I saw um, the weather report for it. It's, uh, it's a, a great little app. Although I did get a comment back from someone uh, that tried to put it on S9. What is that? Must be Galaxy. It's the, the only thing I can think of. Oh, that, oh, that phone. Well, I mean, but what operating system does that use? Uh, well, that could be. Because the, this the, works for Apple and or iPhone and Android. Right, so the trick is maybe it's not. I don't know if they're using a different Android. Although, because but that's another one. I mean, if there's enough people that use it, we want to make sure that we can make this essentially work with all of the, the you know, more popular operating systems. Right. So I, th I think it might be an Android. And I think what they were saying is on the S9 it was actually crashing. But, uh, but like you said, I mean, essentially. Let us know and we'll... Right. You know, we'll reach out to our yeah to, to our team and say, hey, we're getting problems with this particular phone, this particular operating system, what's going on? But in fact, on the app, there is a part on the app where you can do that, and that's what this particular person did. They went in there and they sent an email back, so they gave you some feedback on that. Yeah, I mean, on it, you know, we've got, of course, the parking will be very timely as soon as the parking deck is finished. Yeah, which you you see it coming out of the ground right now in mm -hmm. our town center. Yeah, yeah. We got weather here. We got resources as far as, um, you know, city resources. You know where there's abandoned vehicles or property maintenance stuff. We got the PC Fix It app still. So if you want to, yeah, you know, submit. We have got upcoming events. We got all the restaurants. Yeah, um, including I think mm -hmm. we got it through Google. So wanted to make sure that when they see the restaurant, the the rating of it is through Google. Is through Google. So we didn't rate the restaurants. Does it say that um, there, I wonder? Dining and, ent dining and entertainment. Yeah, it's under that exam. one, but yeah. I, I want to say there was a, I thought there was a disclaimer somewhere. Maybe there isn't, but we, we may need to put that, but I just yeah. want to make sure we didn't go through and rate you know, give the <laughs> restaurants here a three, four, five star, right, whatever. Right. It's good to make you know? that clear. <laughs> yes, because I don't want somebody to be like, wait a second, the city thinks that we're only, no, that was through Google, so we just use right. that. We've got, you know, city news, we got Gwinnett County Transit yes, information, that. so that if you great. wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, we, the, this is cool, I don't, you're not going to be able to see it from that far away, but yeah, I can, for example, if I want to take the route number 30, Lilburn, I can click on that, and actually see the map, and I can actually blow it up, and I can see all the stops along the way that I can find that's near me, and I can uh, go that way. And Waze is, we're having to work through, because it's its own app, work through right. them, that's coming. Okay. So traffic Excellent. information specific to us is coming. So, I mean, again, versus going to the website, 
on your phone where you know it could there's just so much information on a website when you try to use a smartphone you right. get overwhelmed yeah, so yeah. you know apps are the popular way to take that information and scale it down in a way that's easy to see mm -hmm. easy to find through a smartphone and that's what our app is doing so a lot of this information existed but we're trying to make it a little bit easier mm -hmm. and anything anybody can do to give us suggestions please you know reach out let us know it's your app absolutely so it's a great little thing you can find that just do a search for um, corners connect that's the way we search on Google I guess uh, Google app and um, in the uh, App Store so Corners Connect download it try it give give feedback so that's cool it's a good nifty uh, app I'm going to be using that I'm going to be checking things out and giving you guys feedback please uh, we do have a comment on um, Facebook Live. Someone decided, uh, wanted to know about what the city is doing to have more biking infrastructure. So I thought, let's go to that. Sure, sure. Uh, all right, biking infrastructure. Now, of course, there's two types of cycling. Oftentimes, people don't realize what mm. we call oftentimes the spandex crowd yeah. and the non-spandex crowd. Okay. To eliminate the spandex crowd, just so that you know, you know, that's those are the cyclists that are... Um, I guess the, the easiest way is like the Tour de France crowd. Yeah, the hardcore. You know, hardcore yeah. cyclists that are out on the road. And the, the, the issue with those cyclists trying to put amenities in for them is they're moving at such a high rate of speed that being on a sidewalk or having a lane is oftentimes they won't use it because right. they're, you know, averaging anywhere from, you know, 20 to 35 miles an hour. Uh, or more if it's downhill and so right. you would never want to be on a sidewalk where you've got all the yeah, curb yeah. cuts and, and the, you know all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff so they're in the roadway mm -hmm. so when we talk about cycling I do want to you know make sure that the non the, the spandex crowd the only way that we could truly um, put any kind of amenity in for that crowd is right. to to do what happened on 141 uh, from the uh, from really the Ingalls Shopping Center or the merge there, mm -hmm. um, you know where it becomes uh, um, East Jones Bridge, Medlock, right? You know, all that Peachtree Parkway. When you head north from the Ingalls Shopping Center, there is a bike lane off to the right. There is right. a wider shoulder that was striped in just because when they put that section of 141, it had more right of way, mm -hmm. and so you can you know ride on your bike in a striped bike lane. Now it's not separated by, you know, concrete yeah, barriers yeah. or bollards not, or anything. And it's not that wide really. It's, it's not super wide, side. but that is the only way you're gonna get a, a, a spandex cyclist mm -hmm. to use a bike centric one because that's part of the roadway. It's just stripe different. So you're mm -hmm. they're able to move at a high rate of speed and not have to worry about you know, the handicap ramps, uh, right, you know, right. down out of sidewalks and curb cuts and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's funny. I noticed, I think it was, I don't know if it was Brookhaven or Buckhead, that I noticed uh, somewhat similar. Um, well, they have more room, and they're planning it that way, I guess. They want, they want to be able to, they actually striped and colored the bike lane. Right. And somewhat separated it with, um, with a concrete path, if you will. Yeah, there's a number of ways to do it. The best way is if you have a, a bike path, you know, dedicated, you have it separated from the roadway, usually with, yeah, either a curb, so a car would have to come up curb. over the curb. Right. I mean, some of them are even like the, you know, what they call jersey barriers or concrete barriers mm -hmm. you see on the interstate. Sometimes it's bollards. Or maybe if you eat even the flexible, um, you know, um, what we call hit sticks, the flexible, right. Um, right. you know, bollards. Mm -hmm. But... You know, none of those are on the roadway in question. That, but I just, you know, when we talk about cycling, really the spandex crowd is not going to use. So you're we're not in a position to be able to do that stuff, right? So you're really talking about more recreational biking. Correct. About we're talking about recreational, but the non-spandex crowd, the, non the ones who may still do it for exercise, but they're not hardcore. They're mm -hmm. not on road bikes where you're really moving. You know, you're oftentimes in you know, mountain bikes or, right. you know, hybrids or, sure. or even touring bikes where you're just wanting to enjoy yourself. Yeah. Now, to that end then, what we're doing is, you know, we use the term multi-use trail. Right. When we talk about the trail system that's going in. The 12-mile 12, 12 trail Co system. Correct. We use the term multi-use because we want it and are constructing it in a way for it to be multi-use, meaning pedestrian, jogger, and cyclist. 
Okay. And when you do that, um, it's got to be a wider sidewalk. It's got to be wider so that you can accommodate more mm -hmm. users than just one. So how wide is that? We usually try to do 12 feet. 12 feet. So, you know, that way you can have two different directions right. and you have enough, you know, room for cyclists to kind of go around if there's a walker and you're coming up behind them, you know, you have enough room to go right. around. Almost and, as wide as this uh, this room, actually, I think, 12 feet. Right. Well. And so that's what, that's our goal. Sometimes it squeezes down, you know, sometimes it's 10 because of right of way or, sure. or just cost. Sometimes utility, you know, our utility improvements are in the way but basically that so to answer that question long way of saying our multi-use trails purpose is for there to be that almost 12 miles of trails throughout the city right. are there for cycling okay and so you know one of the reasons that uh, you know we're doing it is to increase the you know the non-vehicular mobility of individuals mm -hmm. for functional and recreational you know purposes so we're looking forward to it. We've we've done some of it along Tech Park, right? And yeah. you, you can tell because it's on one side of the road. You have the normal width of a sidewalk, yeah. and then the yeah. other side you got the ten. I think it's ten feet on in Tech right. Park. We're getting ready to execute this summer the section around the lake in Tech Park. Oh, okay. And so that'll be the first time that we're going to be really off of a roadway for you know. Where you kind of feel like you're away. How, how long? How long is it actually going to take to finish everything up on that 12 mile piece? Well, I mean, you're probably talking, you know, because we're we're doing it, we're cash flowing it, meaning the city's not going into debt to construct it. Right. We're right. putting in. I want to say it's about one and a half million dollars every year into that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but that includes right of way acquisition, design, all right. the construction. Sure. Um, I, I think you're talking about a. Probably a five-year program to get all, all of it done. That's not bad, actually. That's fairly quick for a government to be able. It to is, and you know, we still have you know the the part that, of it that I'm really looking forward to is the Crooked Creek, um, air, where Crooked Creek crosses underneath Spalding, mm. there area okay. of the city because, you know, the section of Spalding in between Holcomb Bridge and Winters Chapel. Right. Right in the middle of it is where Crooked Creek crosses underneath. And because of Crooked Creek coming in from, you know, other areas of the city, it's a floodplain, so you can't develop along. So right. like you're kind of in the, you're, you're away from things, which is nice. And so you're going to feel like you're on a path, you know, yeah. away from. Yeah. And it's going to be linking up into the park that Sandy Springs is putting in there off of, uh, what is it, River... Riverside Drive. No, no, no. Um, oh, that's Ross Bowl, actually. Yeah, no, it, it, I want to say it's not River Bottom. Oh, it'll come to me in a second, but. Okay. And so River park, Exchange. A new park they're putting in. Yeah, they're okay. putting in a park there, so it'll link up, and so it'll terminate into a park that Sandy Springs is constructing there. So that's the, the one that we're really excited about, too, because, again, that's kind of a trail that's going to be away from development and kind of out in the woods. Yeah, need so for a whole family to be able to take Absolutely. their kids out and go do that. So, you know, it's, listen, everything can't be done by a city, and I know that some people look at uh, using bicycles as a sustainable thing, also the spandex crowd, if you will, want to be able to have a way to, you know, to be able to go to other places, other cities that maybe are doing it a little bit better for them, if you will. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, in time, those things can change, I guess. But the, for the time being, this is a great thing to have, a multi-path, 12 mile, and the connectivity that the city is doing with, like, the Sandy Springs Park and, and our parks. Yeah, and we, we're also not, we're not overlooking the connecting and making sure that some of our current park amenities are not going to be part of the the trail, right. East Jones Bridge, Simpson Wood. Right. Yeah, or not right. Jones Well, Jones Bridge Park. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, th that you access through East Jones Bridge. And Simpson Wood, you know, you've got Medlock Bridge Park and Holcomb Bridge Park, both sure. access points to the Chattahoochee. Right. And so, you know, we're in, and then our system has a few trailheads, as we call it, which are mm -hmm. locations in which somebody will be able to drive their car and have smaller parking area but they can park their car okay. and take their bike off of their car and put it on go. the trail and go that's part of our 12 mile trail system Excellent. so you know we're we're excited about it but you know again we're we've constructed some already and we've got some some of the um, kind of cooler portions of the the trail getting ready to go in the summer cool 
You know, I have to, something recently happened, you know about this, because every city knows about this, and most everyone in Atlanta is dying because of it. If you're not dying literally, but you know, the city's dying in the fact that they can't collect stuff, collect money payments and things. They just got back online, but this is about the malware, the ransomware cyber attack that happened uh, last, I think it was last Thursday, it's about six days, it took five days for the city to get past the stuff to be able to get computers and hard drives back on. They're still having some issues. Um, they're still, still data lost, but they're not, they're not really sure as far as uh, how much data is lost. So CNN says more than six days after the ransomware attack shut down the city of Atlanta's online systems, officials are still struggling to keep the government running without any of their digital processes and services in place because they still have to come back. The city on Twitter said there's no evidence to show that customer or employee data has been compromised, but who knows? The New York Times says one of the most sustained and consequential cyber attacks ever mounted against a major American city. Unbelievable that it's just like that and everything could be gone. So my question is, <laughs> you know, what is the city of Peachtree Corners doing? Um, you know, certainly not as big as uh, Atlanta, but you know, it's a city growing. Do we, how is that being treated? How is, since that attack, has the city looked at things? Have, you know, what's, what's going on there? Well, we had looked at it well before that. It just, you know, really brings it home, you know, when Atlanta gets essentially crippled yeah. with that attack. And, you know, a couple of things, of course, being big is both good and bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Atlanta really, my, my understanding, they basically do everything in-house. So that can also be problematic if somebody does get into back a house, you know, they get through the firewall because right, yeah. everything is there. We're, we do a lot of outsource stuff. Mm -hmm. So for instance, a lot of the data that you may consider to be sensitive to pay like property tax bills or things yeah. like that were, are not stored at the city because we use the Gwinnett County Tax Commissioner right. to invoice off of the property tax bills. So, so it's, it's that there. would be there. Yeah, they're the ones storing that data. But that being said, we do have some sensitive data. Business license requires some things that, you know, and so mm -hmm. what we do is all of our effort is essentially into encrypting the, you know, the protected data for our community. Mm -hmm. Sure, somebody could get in and maybe get a hold of, you know, PDFs or work product of something we're working right. on, but we can always recreate that. It's not the end of the world. So our efforts are into in encrypting that sensitive data to protect those who do, you know, have to give us some of it for some right. purpose. It, you know, but the thing is, is any more and, you know, we're, we're unique in that as a new city, we were able to start off and be much more, you know, paperless, much more, you know, we, we can facilitate online interaction yeah. more than older cities oftentimes can that haven't, haven't, haven't gotten there yet. And when you do, I mean, the wave of the future is, you know, again, all this online stuff, city apps, doing right. things to it. So yeah. when your information is out there, it's out there. I mean, you know, I bought a house, you know, about a year ago, and so that Equifax, I know for sure that that Equifax, you know, when they got it, I, I had my credit rating pulled when yeah. I went to get mm -hmm. the mortgage, so my data's out there. I mean, it's probably could, I mean, you know, how many times do you hear about some store got hacked and, like, Target, and then you're like, well, go, crap, I was at Target way. during yeah. that t time period. Yeah. So, you know, we got to, you know, we got to be careful our own, but, you know, it's, it's, it's an increasing risk that we're all struggling with. Um, but, you know, we have, you know, a pretty, uh, you know, it's, it's as strong of a, a firewall and, a, you know, that, that we can get, you know, at the commercial level. Mm -hmm. not, not to say that somebody at some point could target our particular firewall yeah. and maybe us and get through. I don't know. I mean, there's been some much bigger organizations with a, some smart people that have, you know, it's almost Hold like, yeah. well, to, to be honest with you, it's almost like a, a criminal, if somebody wants to break into your house and steal something, yeah, it's there's easy. really nothing you can do no. to ensure that they won't. Now, right. you can do things to deter them such that they may look at your house and think, you know, hey, I see a 
you know, beware of dog. I see alarm stuff. Right, right, it's locked. Right. It has good lighting at night right. or whatever. And it deters them. And they're like, maybe I ought to go down the street to another right. house that's not as well. But if they right. want to, mm -hmm. if they're just, you know, no, for absolutely. sure going, they for will. Sure. And the same yeah. with us. Yeah. There are people out there, if the, I get, the Russian government they, wanted to hack the city of Peachtree Corners, that, they and could. It, and it's not even the Russians. It could be anyone. It could be someone, you know, it could be anyone doing it. I think the ransomware was a piddly $51,000 they wanted for uh, to, to turn it back on, to release it. Right, but they had the city I, you know, of Atlanta at their at, mercy. Yes, absolutely. And it's just, you know, and, and like you said, it happens also. We, I work for a group of newspapers, local papers, and uh, one of our sites got hacked, malware. And all it did, it wasn't any big deal, but because we don't take purchases, it's just a reporting news site. All it did was redirect people to a different homepage, someone right. else's homepage. And it didn't do it every time. So by the time we found out, it was hours into it. And we had to put up a firewall through the hosting company, and uh, we had to clean out the malware. But so it does happen that way. And even the stuff with Equifax and, and other companies like Yahoo, we don't find out until a year or two later right. sometimes, or three years later, that all of a sudden that stuff was out there. So And it's only going to get worse as we become more dependent on this stuff. Yes, everything. The city of Atlanta is doing everything by paper now. Do you think that anyone remembers how to fill out right. a form? Or that or they even had, or had the form to fill out. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's, so, it's scary a little bit. Yeah. So moving on, there's, there's lots of things that we could talk about. Another thing I wanted to ask about, because it's been, you know, people have complaints about the waste disposal and stuff, the collection the services. I know that's going out. That's an RFP right now that ends in a couple of days. That's correct. Anything you could say about that? Yeah, so what we decided at the city is we were going to issue a request for proposal for us to ultimately award an exclusive franchise for both residential and commercial waste collection. What that means is there's a couple of, there, there's about four different scenarios that cities utilize when it comes to solid waste. You kind of break it up into the two sides of the of the, the waste collection world, the residential side and mm -hmm. the commercial side. Mm -hmm. And some cities are wide open both sides of the house. They say, look, you can go to whatever waste hauler you want mm -hmm. for anything, residential or commercial. The upside is is the city's not involved in billing. Right. You know, it's between you as a resident and your waste hauler. The downside is, is you could have 20 different waste haulers operating all the, right. every day, all right. over the place. So that's probably the least popular of, of them. The most popular is oftentimes the residential side of the house has an exclusive franchise where the city mm -hmm. says we are providing solid waste collection. Which is the way it is now? That is the way it is now. Okay. So the city is the actual provider of it, right. which people often know you're not. Yeah, we are. We just use a waste hauler, right. in the current case, Waste Pro, mm -hmm. as the organization to provide the service on our behalf. I could bring it in-house. You know, I could buy a bunch of trash trucks, hire a bunch of employees, and run it within. There are some cities that do that. The city of Savannah does that. You know, big, they said big enough city, right? Right, and so you know you can do that. But anyway, ours is currently that way. But the commercial side of the house is free market, so we let commercial establishments, businesses uh -huh. go to the wherever free market they wherever they want. Okay. And the upside, of course, is is you're kind of you know you can go with whoever you want. Mm -hmm. The downside is again we have currently nine weight commercial waste haulers that are operating in the city. Hmm. And it's prob it can be problematic in two, uh, um, you know, in two cases. One is we've got trash trucks, multiple trash trucks operating citywide every day, because even though residential is supposed to all be done on Monday, the commercial side of the house can be any day of the week, and they're right. on varying. So it's not like we only have trash trucks in the city on Monday, and then the rest of the week we don't have any. We have nine waste haulers that are doing commercial and the main downside is we've got nine waste haulers that we have to communicate with if they're not doing the right thing 
So Reg for instance, reg regulating wise. Correct, regulate. So one of the most common problems we deal with is violation of our noise ordinance by commercial waste haulers. So for instance, the forum. The right. forum backs up to a residential subdivision, Amberfield. Mm -hmm. And the forum has multiple waste haulers, commercial waste haulers that empty dumpsters that apply to you know, like Trader Joe's. Oh, no, really? No. Different ones for different Because it's a free market. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of them use the same, you know, so it's not like every single business has a different one. But, you know, you just get some that have one and some that have the other. Trader Joe's can, has their own, I know. Okay. Belk could. The Forum's management company could do it for a lot of small mm -hmm. ones. I mean, they're all over the place. And so we'll get calls of, you know, a, a dumpster being emptied at 530 in the morning. And, you know, that emptying dumpsters is loud. And they shouldn't be doing it. And they I'm should, sure if they're in violation yeah. of the noise, at 7 a.m., you are not to create any unnecessary noise, you know, man made noise, mm -hmm. noise in the, in, you know, in, in the purveyance of commerce right. between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, or that's only when you can do it, is between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. During the week. During the week, correct. On uh, weekends, you're not supposed to collect uh, correct. commercial trash. So we'll get a call, and we don't know which commercial waste hauler to communicate with because it could be one of nine that are out there. Wow. And, you know, these people who reach out, they're not going to know which one it is. No, of course not. Oftentimes they can't even see, but it's close enough to the woods that it's really yeah. loud, it's waking them up. So... Based on that and some other things, the economy of scale or whatever, we decided because our current contract expires December 31st of this year, of this mm -hmm. calendar year. And so we knew we had to make a decision anyway. And so instead of just bidding, uh, uh, bidding out the residential waste, we're bidding out residential and commercial, and mm -hmm. we're going to combine it. And so now the city will be providing you know, both under one franchise. So one waste hauler will get awarded the residential and the commercial side of the house. And all the businesses are, how is that, how's the reaction from the business community that way? Well, I put them on notice, you know, that this is coming mm -hmm. with a letter I sent out, but the, the reaction, it's too early, and here's why. You know, first of all, a current contract, the city's action cannot terminate the terms of, a, of an existing contract. So let's say you owned Acme Widget Company, mm -hmm. and six months ago you executed a two-year okay. commercial agreement right. with, you know, so it can't grant Acme Solid Waste. Even when this happens, the city can't come in and say, Mr. Figliolini, you've got to terminate mm -hmm. your contract. Well, that's, only, that's only fair, right. right? So once it expires, though, of natural, mm -hmm. you know, causes, then you can't execute one with anybody else other than the city's. At so, a certain so, time. So when would something like this take effect? I'm just curious. As soon as we award it, it'll go into effect. Okay. So, so it'll some, go before June of this year. Okay. So if someone wanted, to, I'm just thinking, if I was a business person and I wanted so to, so you're going to go ahead and on the air, go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> just like, no fun. I can't be the only one. Theoretically, right yes, now. you can. Saying. Now, but one thing to consider though is, yeah. think about the economy of scales now. Yeah. That's the other part to this is the yeah. commercial, you know, account holders here will not necessarily be displeased because if a waste hauler mm -hmm. has the entire commercial side of the house and the residential side, right. there is an economy oh, of scale sure. that they sure. can pass on nice. to, you know, their customers in which you may have a current account with, you know, Acme Solid Waste Hauler. Mm -hmm. And then the one that we award comes in and says, hey, if you transfer over to us, we're X dollars a month less because right. we have this big contract. So I'm not so sure you're not going to see an improvement to most of them just because of that fact. I would think so. I know it became cheaper when the city took over the residential part than what Correct. was being paid before. So I can see that. So that'll be going through. So will it expires the end of this <clears throat> month, then the month of April, We'll be scoring the proposals, setting up interviews with our top two or three. Right. And then I'll present to council the highest scored um, organization 
And what that does is they just they, they won the bid then, and what that means really is they won the right to sit down and negotiate an actual contract with the city, okay. and that's when they'll sit down with the mayor and council, okay. and they'll try to hammer out, you know, we'll work with them, try to hammer out the actual terms of a contract. Right. And so that'll be, and we've got to have it by the end of May, because the beginning of June, we have to inform the Gwinnett County Tax Commissioner mm -hmm. of the rate that will be on the property tax bill that goes out That's in right. October. Yeah. So, you, so and it'll really be next year's that. rate. Yes. Okay. So we've got it. We're going to know it by the end of May, not only for that reason, but then the waste hauler that we get, um, I will tell you, we're going to require new trucks. Regardless of who it is, we're going to really? require new trucks. New, like brand new? New, new like, like brand new. No, 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 New York brand new. Because we don't want, you know, we're, we're struggling right now with a lot of hydraulic fluid leaking on yeah. roads and, and, and other fluids from these trucks. And so yeah. we don't want to. So because of that, there's going to be the need for them to place an order mm -hmm. to have the trucks made so that it's here in time to and to get the carts. Wow. That's Unless right. it's well, the well, same, you know, but even if waste it's Waste Pro, Pro yeah. got it, they have the commercial side of the house that they got to do and the trucks are going to have to be brand new. That's an investment on their part. So how long is this contract for? It's usually five years. Five years. Okay. I think it's going to be, it's five years with uh, um, the opportunity for one renewal. Okay. Well, which makes sense. I mean, as a business, you want to, they're going to have brand new trucks. They have to amortize it over the, yeah, over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And, stuff. and that's what our current one was, was one, one five-year term. And we, they could have sure. automatically renewed, but council decided, decided to. no. Too we many need complaints to. about, uh, good, I'm glad to see the city's, uh, we, we heard, yeah, yes. Yeah. So. They're listening. The city is listening. They are doing the right thing here. Um, good stuff. Um, I, you know, the, uh, there's a, uh, well, you know, businesses come and businesses go. And the one that's leaving is one that I thought would eventually leave, one of the first that I thought would actually leave, and that's Earth Fair. Earth Fair, if anyone doesn't know by now, is going to be closing their doors uh, on the 31st. And um, unfortunately, it's just, listen, you have Sprouts that opened, and my son had worked there for, for a couple of years, actually, as a cashier while he was in school. And um, that was before they opened up the Sprouts in Johns Creek, which okay. cannibalized the sales further down the line. But Sprouts is still here, and they're doing reasonably well. They have a good facing store. It's out there and stuff. Earth Fair is similar, although they may not say they are. They're somewhat similar to the, the idea of what Sprouts is. And they're in the back where... Um, um, Office Max was. Office Max Depot. was, yeah. So now they're saying they had too much difficulties with the landlord, and, and I guess they decided the Earth Fair is actually closing two stores here in Atlanta, and that's one of them. The, and the difficulty of them doing business is what they're saying. Well, I mean, look, we've seen the tea, we've read the tea leaves on this for a while. I mean, you got a couple things. One, think about how many boutique grocery stores there are in close proximity. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Trader Joe's, right. you got Earth Fair, you got Sprouts, you got what, Whole Foods just uh, across the Johns of, Creek, yeah, yeah. and you got a couple of Publix, which is not necessarily boutique, but it's a higher end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you know, you know, you only have so many people that shop at you know these kind of things, and so yeah. there was always a little bit of concern of having stretched a little bit too thin, all of these. So that's yeah. we, we kind of, and then two, Amazon's purchase of Whole Foods has yeah. flipped this industry completely upside down, and so Earth Fair's parent organization is making changes region wide, not just here. Or not just region, I mean, uh, nationwide. They're, 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 yeah, nationwide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, their entire service yeah. area, yeah. it's not just Atlanta, and it's yeah. not just this store. It's going to be tough. Now, this store was probably underperforming compared to others because, again, it was competing with so yeah. many other boutique, higher-end, you know, grocery stores. But those reasons together are, you know, what... And, and you know what? The uh, For me, I know someone's made a comment they love the $5 sushi Wednesday. Thanks. Uh, sushi wasn't bad. I like my wife liked the pizza. I do like the pizza there. Not to take out and bake the one that they made fresh, but I gotta tell you, half the times that I went, they either messed up the pizza, they would show it to me. We have a hole in it. We're gonna redo it for you. Half the time they were doing that, or I'd call ahead and they wouldn't have. 
the order got messed up somewhere and they'd be looking at some spiral book with the order that was under tucked under the cap. I'm like, <laughs> how do you guys operate this way? It's just a ten dollar pizza I'm looking for. Literally half the time it, they were just not doing it right. And it was like I if you're doing this wrong, you're doing other things wrong in this store. If I'm I'm not can't be the only one seeing it, you know. So yeah, I, I don't I think they weren't doing a good job to begin with, but you're not the first person that said that all things being equal, the service there was not on par with some of the other ones yeah. also. So I, I don't know. Um, you know, luckily I don't really have to do much shopping. Um, so <laughs> well, except for that, it may be a beer or some other. Thing. <laughs> right, but yeah. you know, but unfortunately, you know, you never like to see any space go vacant for yeah. any period of time. Yeah. So you yeah. know, but. and and this one, I mean, someone pointed out that Urfred didn't promote their business. Sure, you have to educate the brand. I know Sprouts was always at the um, the festivals, the Peace Recorders Festival. Sprouts was always there. Sprouts was always promoting themselves, and they were out there. You didn't see too much of that with Earth Fair necessarily. Um, so there wasn't that much community promotion. So maybe that, that could be another. There was no buy-in. It, was, it wasn't like uh, they were part of the community, the way you see Sprouts in some ways. Um, so there's that. Uh, but that brings me to my other question that I saw on uh, next door, is that people are saying, "Wow, you know, that's a big space. Let's do a 37 Main there. Maybe we could use a, a music venue." Now there was the 37 Main is like um, one of these music venues where you bring in bands. They have food, restaurant, bar, but it's really a band venue, a music venue, concert venue. Um, and there was one up in Johns Creek that just recently had to close because the city of Johns Creek made the rules such that they couldn't serve liquor after 11, they couldn't do certain things essentially to combat the decibel level of the music, I guess. So some people are asking if, if 37 Main might not be a bad idea there because it fronts, they back up to office as opposed to residential. You know, my question would be, well, you might not have enough parking, you might be introducing a type of venue that, um, you know, will create crowds in the area, more, well, less so than a festival, I don't know. But that, that's one of the things that people are looking at. We don't have anything like that, really, in the City of Peace Reporters. Has that come up before? Is it 37. Or well, not particularly really that, but a, a concert. I mean, that, play, that space would actually be big enough, probably. 23,000 square feet. Yeah. It's not all that big for event space, though. No, really. but for a small venue, like 1,000 people. Oh, I don't even know, know if you'd be able to. Maybe not, actually, right? That seed. I mean, if they gutted it and yeah. ripped out the deli counters and oh, the, all that kind to. of yeah, stuff, I mean, ah. Yeah. But anyway, now, yeah. to your point, a couple yeah. things. Um, one, no, we don't currently, but, you know, remember, part of the reason that the town center is being built is it's got a, you know, what, a nearly three-acre town green that's right. going in for the with a stage and a big screen for entertainment purposes. Now, that's outdoor. Right, as opposed to indoor, correct. In, indoor, but there is that recognition by mayor and council initially when they purchased the property and decided to develop it is, hey, we want somewhere that we can have some sort of an entertainment component mm -hmm. and, and a gathering space. So there is coming. That's not to say that an indoor space could not be, um, you know, something that we look at. Speaking of that, now we have not sat back with the suspicion that something could be happening with Earth Fair. We are, we have been talking and are currently talking with a number of entities that could very well be interested in this space oh. sooner rather than later. Okay. And I will tell you that all of the users that the city would like to potentially facilitate getting in there are ones that we feel need to and would support the concept of the town center, the gathering space, the, mm -hmm. the entertainment, you know, okay. the, the destination location, like right. where somebody goes to that for the sole purpose of going to that, not a convenience one. Oh, well, while I'm here, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll go there. And so we're, mm -hmm. we're, okay. we're considering those uses, and we're also, council's going to be at some point, I'm going to, um, present to them some options on how we can tweak a few things within the town center area. That may only mean that triangle in between Medlock, um, Peachtree Parkway, and mm -hmm. Peachtree Corner Circle. Right. 
It may also include maybe a block every direction around there, like the Forum, maybe even the Earth Fair, you know, mm -hmm. shopping center. We'll have to figure out another way to, something else to call it. But Right. And, it's actually and, called something else. But right. Know. But a proposal in which we can tweak a few of the rules related to entertainment, like serving of alcohol and happy hour right. and things like that, to help create more of an entertainment district? Are you, think, are you thinking more of like, a, not necessarily Dave's and Buster's or something like that? Well, in that location, but I'm just talking about even on a map over the entire area okay. is to kind of say, look, this is going to be our kind of entertainment location where we're going to allow unique things there that we wouldn't normally allow mm -hmm. elsewhere. I mean, for instance, if you have something out on the town green, a concert or whatever, for that event, do you allow open container between the restaurants that are there out on the town green? Mm. Is it allowed now? No, no. So you mm. can't you can't go inside an establishment, purchase alcohol, and, and then walk outside with it. Okay. And so you know those are the things. Pretty common. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty common. Can but you bring your own. Well, we've talked. That that's one of the things that we're going to talk about too. Is okay. maybe there's going to be concerts in which we're going to just make it a BYOB. Right type of thing. Okay, and that makes sense. You know, it, it does, and you don't that. want to do that a lot because then the, the, the restaurant venues that are there Correct. would say, wait a second. But sure. then conversely, some people could say, well, I if that's it, more expensive if I purchase it there, or I got to wait in line, or I want, mm -hmm. I mean, so maybe we have a mix. Mm -hmm. But the point is, is that conversation needs to happen, so I'm going to be presenting to mayor and council some options okay. um, in the spring sometimes, early summer, on making that area kind of our entertainment more of a district. Downtown entertainment our, area. Kind of like our entertainment district. And there's there's a lot of cities that actually, they, they it's an entertainment district ordinance that sets out the rules and defines the boundaries of an entertainment district. Because we don't have that right now. That's correct. And would that just, I know you're saying for there, but the, could that be lifted and put somewhere else even? Well, you can have overlay districts to right. where, yes, you could have multiple ones. That would help. Certainly it would, but you know, go, again, what you got to do when you get into this, you got to consider what's bordering yeah. that. You know, mm -hmm. so sometimes you know there may be a location where there's some establishments. You're like, yeah, it'd be cool, but then you look and there's residential near there or whatever. So you know, right. all that's got to be kind of considered and debated all so together. Is this, so is that something that would come out to you know? Because I'm sure this would be a question. Would this be a public hearing about something? Like, is that that's an ordinance? Yes, As it would be an ordinance. So there would be a, and, and council theory. would definitely want to yeah. discuss that with the to community get input too. From Absolutely, people. that's that's great. I'm not surprised that it's going that way. That it makes sense to have something there because when I was hearing about Thirty Seven Main, it was like, well, we don't even have any ordinance that would really uh, work with that. How would you do that? Is it one-off? Or then do you do what you, you're suggesting, which makes more sense? To and, you know, the, yeah, so we, we may have to create a new ordinance to facilitate some of this or tweak a current one, which is fine. I mean, That's but, cool. you know, we, I think we need to discuss it because we've got this unique development that's going to be, you know, opening here at the end of this calendar year, and we want to have some some yeah. cool things happen. See, this is a great way of really finding out these things with Brian because uh, who, how would we know this without doing something like this every month to be able to learn more things that's going on with the city. Um, there's other things going on as well, so let's skip along and we'll get to them too. There was something about Atlanta, an Atlanta developer called Parkside Partners to launch a Peachtree Corners loft office project that just I just saw recently in Business Journal Chronicle a few days ago. That is correct. And I'm trying to figure out what, where, uh, they, they had one paragraph, they didn't say much. So I'm hoping you can fill us in a little bit on yeah, that. Yeah, two buildings from where we currently sit. And I don't okay. So you look out that window right yeah. there, and you can see the top of that building right there. Right. Just on the other side of that. Huh. It's a large building that used to house Honeywell. Right. And so Parkside Partners okay. uh, purchased it, and they're going to put in what are called loft offices. Yeah, now what are, how do they define that? Because they mentioned two or three buildings, actually, as part of that. Yeah, well, my understanding is, and I, and I had been briefed, I don't know, about four months ago that this was potentially coming, and then I saw the concept. My understanding is, is they're creating... Class A office, too. Oh, so yeah, Class A. Cheap stuff, yeah. 
but that there's going to create this courtyard in the middle of all these offices kind of that are around and inside is this courtyard to be used by those who are in the offices mm -hmm. that has, you know, kind of the, those, you know, perks Camp. and, you know, things that millennials like to have. Campus, and, a campus feel. Correct, and everything. And then so I think that, you know, the loft office, uh, I guess, you know, floor plan is pretty open. Mm -hmm. No ceiling tiles, open ceiling. Kind of industrial. You know, kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of open like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what they mean by that. Okay. But Parkside Partners has actually done this and repurposed some old I office did. space in Midtown. Yeah, I saw some of those this renderings. Is, Beautiful. Right. This is the first time I understand that they've stepped into suburbia. <laughs> so we're pretty excited, yeah. you know, because this is kind of a, a unique model and it's one that's very popular again with the, the millennial crowd that's entering the workplace. Well, even, so. you know, people get, I know millennials used a lot, but even for the just young companies moving in, even startups from here, I mean, could end up there. Correct, and, absolutely. In fact, if we're ridiculously successful, we'll graduate <laughs> from Prototype Prime and they'll move into yeah. their own space, renting at one of those things. Yeah. So so that that's so, do you, is, was there a timeline or anything like that? No, uh, th there was not. I mean, oftentimes, you know, what they, you know, the, if you talk to the company right now, I'm sure they would have something, but yeah. until they approach us with, like, permit application right. or whatever, we don't There's know. no rezoning expected for that since it's Correct. office space. The, um, okay, moving on, Peachtree Corners Library. The Gwinnett County uh, Library System is shutting down Peachtree Corners Branch here for a few days in April to put in a new HVAC. Yep. Did you hear, I know there's a lot of libraries actually going through renovations. There's one in Marietta, I think, or DeKalb, DeKalb County, Cop, Cop County, I think, that just redid their whole place. They're, they put in a green room, they put in podcast studios. It's become a more of a media center. Do you hear anything about that with, um, with these guys? We have not, I have not. Okay. I have not. All right. So maybe we'll touch but not not to say that they aren't, but you know, they haven't reached out to us. All right, cool. I, you know, it tends to be that the city knows lots of things going on, but not everything that's going on with regards. Well, some outside. organizations have their own <laughs> plans internal until the last second. Right, and then they let you know. Um, at the last uh, meeting, I think the city council meeting, you guys went over a few things. I just want to bullet point through this a little bit. Um, one of them was. Um, tattoo parlor request for a special use permit uh, for Holcomb Bridge Road. Was that approved? That it was, was not. Second. was not. Okay. So that's fine. Um, I'm not looking to get one, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, was there particular reasons or didn't fit the zoning, original zoning stuff there? It, there was not any reason that the, those who voted against it necessarily expressed why they voted against it. Okay. Uh, fair enough. It was also a consideration for tall structure permits to allow 100 foot monopole antennas, antenna, actually at 3737 Holcomb Bridge Road. Where is that? Near, um, let's see, Meadow Rue. Meadow Rue. Okay. Um, like north of where Peachtree Corner Circle crosses Holcomb Bridge. Okay. North of that, in between the crossing on Holcomb Bridge with Peachtree Corner Circle and Spalding. And Spalding. In between. Okay. Was that approved also? It was. was. Okay. Um, not too much of a problem there, I guess, with that. I mean, it's a cell phone tower, and yeah. in this case, they're not putting other equipment on it, so it is going to be a monopole, very thin in, in, in its okay. profile. Um, there's also a base, was it, no, a sports, uh, sports field complex. Volleyball. Volleyball, there you go. Peachtree Industrial and Governors Lake Drive. Did they get their uh, approval they too? They did. On that? That's, that should be another great addition, I think. Too. Yeah, why Especially not? Especially if you're involved or in sports. Or organize volleyball yeah. tournaments there, yeah. absolutely. Um, cities uh, saw the elevation plans come in here from the townhomes for the town center. There's 72 or so Correct. townhomes. And they brought in elevation plans that the planning department recommended approval on. Planning commission recommended approval. I'm assuming the city went ahead and approved. They did not. Now why? They tabled it because okay. there were some aesthetic improvements that city council wanted to see. Okay. So they kicked it back to the 
to the uh, architect and developer and said we need you to upgrade certain aspects of it so it was tabled to a future meeting until they come back and work with staff and upgrade it was it mainly the park facing side the in town the in town side or just no it was all of it i mean one of the points is is it needs to be masonry four sides okay because you know they're saying look there's going to be activity from all angles at the town center and so there's really no back of house option okay like you oftentimes have and you know there were some commitments i understand that were made but which predate me mm -hmm. you know going back with our partner in Fuquay development right. who they were using and right. so that was brought up to say hey you told us certain things and not to say that they were not trying to do it it's just you know and you know and, and to mayor and council's credit they're saying look we got one shot at this mm -hmm. we got one on the on the you know short of us taking the property the seven acres we just purchased and putting more residential on it which i do not see happening for the record <laughs> okay but short of that this is it as far as developable space on the town center mm -hmm. and so, so mayor and council you know their credit said we want this to be done right we so, want it to be done well we want it to you know be a, a you know an example mm -hmm. for others and so we want you to add certain things so right. well, they'll have to come back they're holding their feet to the fire they good, are good to hear uh, there were also first reads of like the city code for public hearing requirements for tall structure permits. I remember going back when I was on the planning commission about uh, the steeple at P PCBC, Peach Recorders Baptist Church. That was a Gwinnett County at that time, had to uh, talk about that. And that was a tall structure addition. Is this similar type of deal? Or what does this In do? our current, the process that we currently use for applications to build something mm -hmm. which normally require you going through the planning commission then the city council right. tall structure permits did not have the planning commission component as a mandatory step oh okay and of course why cities mm -hmm. have planning commissions and like them is because it's a group of people who get together as you well know mm -hmm. generally have a unique expertise or at least become unique, unique experts that, right. and you know their job is to try to vet and filter some of these projects coming through in a way that they think will benefit the community and there's always a public hearing component and so before it gets in front of the final adjudicating authority in this case the city council planning commission is a great method for you know again for there to be discussion and work through certain conditions mm -hmm. before it gets to council and the tall structure permit just wasn't a part of that process right, so we're so making it a part of the process all right, so it's a process thing and that's good yep i mean listen city council has to attend to a lot of things it's good to have a planning commission in the middle of that to help correct do what you said um the other thing was business well temporary signage and home-based business signage um how'd that we have you know there's a thing called the home occupation uh -huh. there are certain types of business activity that you can do out of your home and our sign ordinance as it related to home occupation was it needed some tweaking we don't want it to open up to the wild west and now somebody can get you know operate out of their house and then Put they got these big sign yeah, yeah and we don't want that however we also it is fair for somebody to say i would like to have something to show and this came up because you know we got tax season is yes. you know currently in tax season yes. yeah. and we have some you know individuals who really only practice accounting during tax season and mm -hmm. they do it out of their house mm -hmm. so it's not a right. you know and, the, and they were saying look I can't put anything up because the sign ordinance so this is allowing it's tweaking it to allow for a small if you meet certain conditions a small sign on the face of the front face near the front door Oh, okay. or near the door that you'll use for right, your business right. so it's it, but it's regulating it because right now there's some loopholes where people could almost put a sign out almost like a political sign mm. which we don't want yeah. so we just needed to regulate it but not let yeah. it get out of hand so it's, it's got to be small on houses yeah. it's got to be fixed to the structure it's got to be near the door that you're using for business not out in the in, in the you that's know, yard that, that's almost like uh when they used to say hang your shingle, shingle. out the door same, correct same type of deal. Cool. Um, there was also a resolution that the 
to rectify, to recertify as a Georgia certified city of ethics? Can you explain what that means? And the I mean, the, the, Georgia has a program called Certified City of Ethics. And it's just a program in which if you want to be one, there's a certain checklist that you have to have certain things in place okay. to really take away the the risk that there could be ethical, you know, I mean, take away the ingredients for there to be ethical, you know, issues right. that evolve right. within our operations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it established certain parameters in which a council member may recuse him or herself or, you know, certain things like that. Okay. It's pretty, it's boilerplate. I mean, the state kind of came up with this, but if the city wants to participate, right. It has to adopt certain ordinances stipulating that it's not going to do certain things okay. or whatever. Well, the city did it five years when we became a city. Right. And so after five years, it's you have to recertify. Okay. And you got to go through and you got to make sure certain things within our operating, you know, rhythm are updated because um, ethics law in the state has changed since we did oh, it initially. Sure. So every sure. certified city of ethics has to do this. It was just our time. So it was a housekeeping measure, but we needed to, council needed to adopt a resolution saying that we made all of those updates right. pursuant to state law. That's cool. Yeah, uh, we, we have citizen representatives just like everywhere else. And, you know, they have other jobs, they're doing full time jobs, and they may not realize that sometimes where you may be doing something and you're thinking it's okay, it could be looked at as not okay. Correct. And, and so having something like this in place makes sense. Brian, we're at the close to the end of the hour, and you, you're a busy man because your phone's been buzzing, 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 buzzing. Oh, this is typical. The hour. This is typical. <laughs> Which is unbelievable, and this is good. I mean, is there what, what have we missed? Or? Well, I mean, right now that's you know get up to date. I will say that you know next time next month when we meet. I think I'm going to have a very um, there'll be two things that we should probably talk about. One is we may be having a kind of an exciting announcement regarding autonomous vehicles. Oh, well, yes, so, skipped over that. because Well, cool. it's a little bit premature, right. but um, I think next month at this time we'll be we'll be in a position where we can. Excellent. And then the other thing, too, is today is signy die, last day of the General Assembly's legislative session. Yeah, how'd that go? We're gonna have well, to we won't that. know because yeah. they can go till midnight tonight, and they will go to midnight tonight. <laughs> I mean, so today there is a lot of shenanigans going on at the state capitol that, right as we speak i am sure and how many pieces of legislation would affect this city because what they i won't know until i mean we, there's a number of bills that we are looking somewhat mm. you know with concern about okay um you know one of the things that, that happened and it's already it's on the governor's desk he hasn't signed it but is taking away city's ability to restrict building material for apartments of a certain height Right, that actually used got to, to be, be governor's desk. It is on the governor's desk. Unbelievable. Cities could have had the ability to say, if apartment is over a certain height, it yeah. has to be built out of steel instead of wood. Uh -huh. And the lobbying, some lobbying interest didn't like that, so they took away. And now cities cannot regulate building material for apartments anymore. I don't if the governor signs it. Right, let's hope he does, because I just don't understand that, especially from a Republican a Republican-held legislature to to put restrictions on local governments of what they can and cannot do in their own city? That's ridiculous. Local control is always under attack when the General Assembly is in session. But usually... Be surprised from how they like them. They, from your own fellow Republicans? You know, from... I don't... Just don't get that. But you're right. I mean, all sorts, that's why you're there... As lobbyists, sometimes to yes, you know, to do. lobbying is ninety percent trying to prevent things that could hurt you from happening, and ten percent trying to actually, you know, yeah. lobby for proactive legislation. So we'll we'll be able to talk about the things that we narrowly right. averted, or the things that were signed into law, and how it'll affect us. Thank God they only have forty days there. <laughs> Correct. Right, Brian. Thank you for joining me. I Thanks for having you. me. Yeah, this is good. So. I'm going to be posting the audio as our podcast tonight as well. Uh, sorry that that wasn't feeding live. Well, uh, that not an issue with the prototype po uh, type podcast studio. More of my technical issue on my end. But we are um, we'll be resolving that for the next meeting. And I want to thank Prototype Prime for 
giving us the studio. This is a great place to be. If you're a startup looking to be a startup with technology, hardware, uh, this is the place to do it. They have uh, two 3D printers. They have an open space area. They have 40 companies that actually work out of this um, 12,000 square feet. And one of the companies actually moved upstairs into... Well, it's under renovation, but yeah, we're doubling, so we'll be at 25,000 square feet here in about two months. So a lot of, a lot of things going on here. It's a great, great place to be, and if you need a podcast studio, you need mentors, you need help. They do workshops here. In fact, there's one workshop going on that's the city's holding here, I think, which is uh, more photography, uh, how to use photography for your business. So it's not just the incubator itself, but it's things that's going on. It's very busy, very uh, hive-like, and it's uh, a great place to be. Yeah, good energy. Yeah. So thanks for being with us, and uh, I'll call it out, and we'll end up closing this. But be with me next week as well. We have, for the next two or three Thursdays, I believe, skipping spring break, we're going to jump into three weeks of political interviews with two Gwinnett Superior Court judge candidates and a state senator.